Hello, everybody. My name is Amanda Fallis, and I am an archivist at the City Archives and Special Collections at New Orleans Public Library. Today, I'm proud to present to you a one-hour Zoom webinar and question and answer session with Gaynell Brady of Our Mammies, an esteemed local genealogist and historian and also a champion of African-American heritage in Louisiana. Please enjoy her program, Finding Isabel Mabel London Jefferson, a New Orleans matriarch. Thank you. I have the privilege to be a part of uh, the local uh, African-American genealogy, genealogy and historical society of Louisiana. It's a newly formed chapter. And one of the things that we do emphasize on um, is researching the whole person and uh, just tips that I've gained along the way from Black Pro Gen is just so important to not just, as I would call it, finding dates and uh, documents, but really trying to get to know each of your ancestors as you go along, but also taking the time to document your own lives as well, which is something that we all can do right now, especially with some of the time left on our hands um, during the pandemic. So like I said, um, this is just a brief introduction to African-American genealogy. Uh, the, the tools that I'm going to give you here can be applied, applied to anyone um, researching um, their ancestors. Uh, this is a photo from Bayou de Salmon, where uh, my uh, ancestors uh, lived in the early 1900s. And, um, it's interesting that I'm still learning so much about the community and the people who live there. Uh, and I'm learning so much about my maternal ancestors, especially the, the way that they talk and the way that they prepared, prepared food. Um, they didn't originate from this area, as you will soon learn. They came here in the early 1900s and then later to New Orleans. So I just wanted to share that little piece of information. This is like one of my favorite views of Louisiana. So when you are doing any type of research or family history uh, recordings or whatever with your ancestors and your family members over the holiday season via Zoom or whatever uh, methods that you're using, you need certain tools to keep your genealogy uh, research organized. And uh, voice recorder, if you're using a Zoom feature, you can just hit record, notepad so that you can take notes. Um, portable scanners, cameras, and binders. And I'll say uh, something about this notepad. I know it may seem a little strange for me to mention that in the digital age, but um, when I was visiting a family cemetery up in uh, Glen, Louisiana, actually Rugal, Louisiana, and I noticed that a lot of the grave sites didn't have any names on it. And I ran across a gentleman who was uh, living across the street from the cemetery, and he knew my family very well. So uh, this guy was able to point out the grave sites of all of my ancestors and the names of each person that was buried at each of the sites. And because I had that notepad and pencil with me, I was able to actually document those grave sites and put it on, find a grave, and then also I just drew a map of the cemetery for my family and where each person is located. So the camera and the notepad certainly came, it was certainly very handy on that day. Um, and from that moment forward, I just created me a bag with all of my genealogy tools in there, uh, especially if you're planning to visit the area where your family came from or your local cemetery. So when you are looking or starting your research, some of the things that you need to know is just where to look and what documents are available. And the most important thing that you can do is document everything. So what I like to do with each person that I'm researching, uh, I like to create a timeline, especially if I know when that person was born and when that person died, or even just a general, area, a general time period. 
so that I'll know that I am trying my hardest to find every possible document or source that's available. So in the case of my bell, she lived during the time of my mom, so I was I already knew when she died, and I had a good idea when she was born. So I just pretty much created a general timeline so that I can plug and make sure that I'm capturing every single thing for my bell. So I started out pretty much with 1890 and then 1940, and then I started looking at areas where, do I have a document for this time period? Do I have a document for this time period? And what time period I'm missing something? So those of you who are familiar with genealogy, you will certainly understand why I don't have a lot of information for 1890. Um, Monbel was born in 1888. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit more about the 1890 uh, census in a moment, but I'm still uh, trying to find any type of written record for her for the 1890s. Um, I do have a lot of oral history on her life, but nothing uh, written, and I'm still looking for those. And that's something else you're going to learn about genealogy. If the, no genealogist would ever tell you, I'm done researching. It's impossible. The best thing that we can do is keep good notes to pass it on to the next genealogist in our family, but it is impossible to be done with your family tree and say, oh, yeah, that project's done. It's never over. It's a never-ending cycle. So one of the things that helps us to keep organized when we're researching, and especially in the case of my bell, this family moved around a lot. So research logs help me to keep track of the documents that I've found thus far. And what I try to do is just make a list of every single source that I have on this person. So if someone's asking me, like, how would you find that out? Well, here's my documentation. I cited my sources. And if you're using a software online, such as Ancestry, you're able to keep your sources organized there. But the important thing to really keep in mind, just because I found something with uh, uh, Belle London or, or, or Isabel Jefferson on it, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's the person I'm looking for. We really need to take the time to analyze your findings. And uh, it's important to do that. It's important to do that very early on in your research. Um, in order to make sure that you are, share, or, or, or adding the right information to your family tree. Uh, Louisiana, we already have a lot of people with the same last name, and it will make those things more interesting when all of those people with those last names in the same communities marry each other. And that can be very frustrating if you have any of the, you know, the common last names of Louisiana, such as Landry's and Thibodeau's and uh, uh, Bartholomew, Bartholomew, all of those names can make it very confusing for you. So it's so, so important for you to analyze the things that you're finding. And uh, this resource log here is available on familysearch.org. And I'm going to be seeing a lot of different websites, but no worries. Every website that I mentioned is available in my digital resource guide. So if you subscribe, if you go to my website and subscribe to ourmammies.com, you'll receive a free copy of that digital resource guide. And it's gonna be uh, made available for free all of 2021. So uh, please take time and go and download it and uh, use it for your research. So back to the research log itself. Um, it's easy to keep a track of these. I usually use a three-hole punch and put this in a large binder just so that I can keep track of all of the uh, logs for each person that I'm researching. Because genealogists, we sometimes get so excited by the things that we found, we don't take the time to document where it came from, and we'll find the same thing three times. Trust me, it's happened to me twice this week. So just uh, be mindful to track where it is you got it from, if there is any identifying numbers or call numbers or such that you can use and just what year is attached to, just any method that you can use. We can also 
use a spreadsheet if you're into that and type the same information on a spreadsheet and keeping track of it that way. But it just helps you to stay on track and helps you to fill in all of those missing gaps of good data. So I'll, I want to talk to you a little bit about my bell and just how I get how, how I got to this point. And if I get emotional, excuse me, but everywhere I went in my family's home, just hearing conversations, I heard conversations about this woman as a very young child and how amazing she was. And I really didn't know too much about her other than she died a couple of years before I was born. But her photo is still hanging in my parents' home, in my aunts and uncles' home, just just all of her descendants. Somebody has her photo up. And we've heard so many wonderful stories over the years about her cooking and how she baked goods and how she uh, raised this child, how she took care of this child. And no one really said to me, you know, how we're related. I just knew she was Mama Bell or Mom Bell, and everybody loved her. And then, and then when they talked about her, just seeing the amount of pride in her eye, in their eyes, and just, I've never heard anyone say anything bad about this woman. So all I remember was that I saw this photo in my mom's house, and I just saw this woman. And when I see, when I look at her, I see myself, and I'm attached to her. And it's it's kind of strange. Um, I've never met her before, but if I can be like anybody else in the world, I would be this woman. And she is so inspiring for me. I keep her photo with me. If you could see above my head, her her photo is up there. I keep uh her image all around me because things that she's endured in life has helped her to move forward. And we all have someone like her on our family tree. So that's why I feel it's so important to take the time to really document that person's life who inspires you and not only document it, but to share it. So for me with my bell, I just wanted to know how am I related to this person and who was this person and where did she come from? So I started out with oral history, and here you go, looking at a snapshot of my mom with the black dress on, and then um, my aunt and uncle, um, and these are the people's brains that I pretty much picked about my belt, and um, my aunt who has on the black shorter skirt, um, she, what I would call just be like the family gatekeeper, like she knew and preserved all of the family history. And, you know, I really thank my Auntie Brenda for doing so because she helped me tremendously with getting started on this side of a tree. You know, we all have that person in our family who dedicates their lives to collecting photos and obituaries and all that stuff. We all have it. And if you're on this call right now, you're probably that person. Um, so give yourself a pat on the back for doing so and just know that there's someone who's going to come behind you who's going to take your place. So you want to make sure that you're leaving good records for them. So in the case of my bell, I was able to talk to all of the people who you see sitting here, well, except for my cousin Reginald, who's in the wheelchair. But, uh, but the rest of them pretty much either met her or either just uh, were, were lived with her for a short period of time, spent some time with her in the summer. But these are my Belle's great-granddaughters, and this was like my greatest resource. And not to mention any of the neighbors or friends who lived around her. Just anyone who knew her spoke highly of her. So interviews and oral history when it comes to family history is very important. And then the next thing we can do is try to find any living spouses or descendants. Well, my Belle's husband, Alex, died the same year she died. Um, so she died in April 1971. Um, Alex died in 1971. Um, the only one who was living in my time frame was um, my great aunt Mary. But the problem was I didn't even realize growing up that she was my Belle's daughter. And that's just the thing about.
about like my family is so huge. You just know people are related to you. You don't know exactly how. And it may not just be my family, but you just know that's a cousin, that's an aunt or whatever. So in this case, my Mary, as we called her, um, died in 1995. Grandma Florence, happy birthday, Grandma. Um, she was born on January 14th, and I'm um, doing an impression of her now when she would have first arrived in New Orleans. Grandma Florence died in 1957, six years before my mom was born, so I couldn't talk to her. And um, Mama Elsie died in 1975. So all of these people, including her son Joseph, were all deceased before um, I was born. But all of the people who were on the previous slide, they knew these people. And they were able to share with me information about my bell that's not readily accessible on a document or just easy for me to find. I, that's how I knew my family came from Clinton was from these people. So the next stop on my genealogy journey was to try to find obituaries from my mouth. And as you can see here, the obituaries just opens up a whole world in terms of information. I usually like to take my obituaries, and I know I'm like a, a super paper book holding kind of person, but I highlight important stuff such as like, oh, these were her parents, and this is her mom, this is her brother, this is her siblings, this is where that person was living. So when it came to analyzing data, if I saw Henry Myers living in Louisiana, I knew I had the wrong Henry. But I noticed something strange about my belt. It said that her dad was John Myers, and I would have thought that, oh, my belt must be a Myers. But Talking with my Uncle Clay, I learned that, hey, my Belle wasn't born a Myers. My Belle is actually a London. And then when I looked at her obituary, I saw that she had a brother named Thomas London. So I took notes, and I made sure to document that, hey, my Belle is a London. You need to go and look for her with this. And who was her dad if she was, in fact, a London? So... Another piece that sticks out with my bell, I saw that she was, you know, her funeral took place at Second Nazareth Baptist Church, and that's the family church. So I know that I could also possibly look at information at the church and see what information was available there. I also saw that she was buried at Hope Cemetery. So that was another clue, another place that I can look for information. So another thing that we can do uh, in the case of looking for people, you can turn to the Secretary of State site to try to find death records depending on when that person died. So you can get like archived death certificates as long as the person's been dead 50 years or longer. And it's very easy to go onto this site. The link is in that digital resource guide. But you can kind of see if that obituary is available through the Secretary of State's website. If it's not, then that means that death is too soon and you would have to get a next of kin to order the death certificate for you. So before I go any further, I want to point out that the most important resource that you can have during this pandemic is your public library card. Because this library card is gonna open up a world of information to you um, that through the digital world right now. We can't go into the research centers as all genealogists love to do it when it first opens and when it closes, but we can certainly access some databases online. So the one of the things, the three things that I want to point out, and then I'm sure uh, Amanda will jump in, <laughs> she wants to add more, um, is the access to the free databases. My gosh, you guys, if you have not checked out the public library's website, and look at those free databases, you're missing out on a ton of information. You can also, free information at that. Um, you can also uh, do pick up a book, dropping them off, and then also just the city archives and special collections. So Amanda, can you uh, drop the link if you're not able to pop on yes. for, the, uh, the, for the city archives and the special collections section? So I, I want people to really 
take a look at that at the end of a call so that they can understand how much. I couldn't even cover everything that the library has. Yeah, but I mean, I just, just the archives alone has um, I, as much stuff as the library has, <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> Let me get that link in there for you all. This will this will take you directly to our website, the archives website. Um, that link mm -hmm. is in the chat right now. If you all want to click on it and then bookmark it, that's us. That's our. Yeah. Website. And then um, everything Danielle said was true. Um, our uh, when you have the library card, the digital databases are actually or um, accessed directly through nolalibrary.org, which is the main website. Um, which I typed in there too, but you can't click on, but you know. Um, if you if you have question, if you are not in Orleans Parish and you have some questions about access, I'm happy to answer them in our question and answer session that we'll be doing at the end. And uh, mm -hmm. I will say that uh, we do uh, on our main web, I'll, I'll do a little sort of test drive that shows you the website and shows you where to go to click to apply for either an out of, res out of area card or if you're in um, Jefferson Parish, uh, kind of what you need to do, but like we have reciprocal borrowing agreements with Jefferson Parish. So I'll give you a short walkthrough of um, how to make sure that you're accessing our resources or Jefferson Parish resources, et cetera, and um, what you would wanna do to get access to both. But uh, I will go ahead and um, let's see here. Uh, and, um, we uh, so all of the links for just to put this in one more one more time. All of the links for our presentation today. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, um, is are going to be here on the program page, which I am going to drop into chat again. Awesome. But um, I will get to more questions at the end in the question and answer session, and we'll answer both of those types of questions at that point. And let me turn it back over okay. to Kale. Awesome. So, I, I, you know, as I mentioned, we're going to go back to Vital Records. I had to do that quick commercial break because it's, that's some of the things that I'm talking about is available for free um, on the website, the public library's website. And I didn't want you to miss out on that. Um, another thing is the Vital Records, the Secretary of State office up in Baton Rouge. So, I have this little thing, and I don't have it in front of me, but I usually make a list of all of the marriage records and uh, death certificates that I want to get, and then I usually take a short trip up to Baton Rouge to pick them all up at one time. Um, things may be a little bit different because of the pandemic, especially with us going for phase two, phase three, phase one. So before you do any of that, I would recommend that you give them a call first. But you can also order these objects offline as well through the Secretary of State's website, and the link is inside of that digital resource guide. So I just want to point out that birth records for dates more than 100 years old, they weren't necessarily required in Louisiana until 1918. And just because it was required in 1918, it doesn't necessarily mean that every parish was able to uh, get those done right away. So in the case of my Belle, if I'm looking for a birth certificate for her, she's born in 1888, I may not be able to find one unless there was something done on a local level or unless she was born in Orleans Parish um, or unless the, the, the church did something or even a, a midwife may have recorded something in her book for her. But I don't have a birth certificate for my Belle and none of my ancestors who were born prior to 1930. So I mentioned briefly uh, when I was looking at Mom Bell's obituary that Mom Bell was buried at Hope Cemetery. And I contacted Hope Cemetery. Um, it's a city-ran cemetery. And I just wanted to confirm her burial information. And I just wanted to identify where her grave was located because I went to the cemetery. And if you've ever visited Hope, it's, you know, it's kind of challenging. Um, at the time when Mom Bell passed away, uh, the family still didn't have enough money to purchase a proper um, grave marker for her. So it's one of my goals to secure one for her as soon as I'm able to. But it's so important to visit the cemetery where your families come from, to take care of them, but to also remember them and everything that they've sacrificed for you. 
So I was able to contact the City of New Orleans uh, Cemetery Division and uh, find out exactly where my bell and Grandpa Alex were buried, along with many others of my maternal ancestors. Another spot I looked for records from my bell was within the church itself. Remember, um, her obituary shows that she was buried there. Well, when I went to visit the church, now, this church is very special to our family. Um, it was founded by my bell's uh, father. I want to use those terms loosely right now. Father, um, Reverend John Meyer. And um, the, his daughters helped to pay for that building that you're looking at there. Um, the church is no longer uh, with the family now um, because of financial difficulties. Uh, we were unable to keep the building. It's starting to fall apart. But those two cornerstones that you see there, they all bear the name of Alex Jefferson, my Bell's husband. So one of the things that's to my advantage, my Aunt Brenda, who's uh, actively involved in the church and preserving the church history, was able to share with me a document that was created many, many decades ago about the church and where it was founded. And it was at that time I learned that that church was actually founded in De Solomon, Louisiana. But the cool thing about the church is that they have uh, not only church history, but marriage programs and records and also baptism and christening information, which is also available if your ancestors were Catholic at uh, the office Oh, gosh, my, my stuff at the Catholic Archive. So that link is on my digital archive as well and my digital resource guide. I'm sorry, guys. My tongue is getting twisted. So just remember to check with your family church, especially if this family church is in a rural community. A lot of your history resides with those churches. Get in touch with the current pastors, the secretaries, to see if there's any church history attached to your family history. So as I mentioned earlier, um, this is Reverend John Myers. Uh, uh, Mom Bell's father, and he organized the church in 1920 in St. Solomon. So the church was moved to New Orleans after a couple of years after. This is the inside of the church. So the church uh, came here in 1925 and reorganized into an old garage building. So it's letting me know. These little movements let me know that Mom Bell was definitely in the area in 1925. They were definitely living in the uptown area in the 1920s. So I should no longer be looking for my bell in Jay Solomon's in the 1930s because the church history told me that, oh, they're in New Orleans as of 1925. Another spot that you want to look is uh, universities. Universities are very helpful, especially local universities in the areas where you're researching because they may hold your family history. In my case, I got very lucky that Tulane University Amistad Research Center had the papers from Reverend James Young. Reverend Young took over the church after uh, Reverend Myers passed away. So his papers contain Bibles and photographs, and you guys, that's like a gold mine for people looking for African-American um, ancestors because we don't have a ton of photographs. Um, so when I went into John Myers, I'm sorry, John, James Youngest paper, I was able to see the inside of the church uh, when it was uh, very prominent. And looking at those old wooden floors, right now the church has carpet. It was just an amazing treat. So don't doubt the local universities and what has been donated to them from people who um, could no longer care for their uh, their archives. So here's a closer look of what it looks like when you go to search on Amasai Research Center. It gives me a little bit about Reverend Young, and then it also tells me what's inside of his collection. And you can do that as well. You can create a collection for your family history and work with the local universities to see if they're interested in storing it or keeping it. So for this case, I was able to look in a few boxes. As it said, it had diaries, appointment books, family papers. Um, click, uh, clippings, and you know how important the family Bible is to everyone. Another spot that uh, would help me was just military records. Um, my bill didn't serve in the military, but her husband, Alex, did. And as you can see here from this slide, Alex was living in the Salmas, Louisiana, or as my grandma would call it, Bayou Velma. 
he was working at a sawmill, um, Bowie Lumber Company, and then I heard from my parents, my mom and my aunt, that uh, Grandpa Alex had an injury from working at the sawmill, and on his uh, draft card, we can see that his right arm was off at the elbow, and his left hand was gone except for the thumb. So that saw was, must have been very dangerous, and that when I saw this document, it just confirmed what I knew about Alex. And it also confirmed, yeah, Mama Val was married to Grandpa Alex. Same thing with his World War II registration card. Um, it shows that they were living uptown on Chapatula Street. With genealogy, you're going to notice some variations in spelling. But this, this I did oh, I did know that um, Grandpa Alex lived on Chapatula. I did, it did confirm that. They were living in Clinton. They were born in Clinton, and his birthday was on January 2nd, 1885. And it also shows me that Grandpa Alex wasn't working when he was in New Orleans, but I heard that Ma Bell was pretty much the breadwinner. Yay, Grandma, for stepping up to the plate. Another spot is census, and with the census, it's very tricky unless you know all of the rules. So, for one, you can search by name and approximate date of the person, like when he was born or when they lived in the area. You should document everything, as I mentioned earlier, but also understand that the census is only released every 72 years. So, the 1950 census will not be released until April 1st, 2022. So, you wouldn't be able to find the 1950 census right now unless you're looking for a very specific person and you're on there. Otherwise, we have to wait until 2022, right? Um, starting in 1870, uh, the census listed the names of all African Americans. Prior to that, um, only free people of color were primarily listed, unless on the 1850 and 1860 slave schedules, um, the, um, the, the slave master may have listed the person's um, name and age. The other piece is the 1890 census was destroyed in a fire in 1921, so only 1% of that was recovered. I do know people who were able to find their ancestors on the 1890 census, but it just wasn't my look with my bell. So here um, is my bell family um, on, the eight, on the 1940 census, and I kind of started with 1940, as you should, and worked our way back. So it shows here on this line that Mama Bell was a cook for a private family in 1940, and they were living at 3647 Chapasula Street, which, as indicated on Grandpa Alice's uh, registration card. If I go back, uh, one thing I want to mention, too, when you're looking at the census, pay attention because look at the people around your ancestors and pay attention to those names because you may find that the relatives are all living next door to each other. So here's the family again, Alex Jefferson, Isabella Jefferson um, in 1930. And at this time, they're in New Orleans. But remember, we knew that from the church records. It shows that they were living there uh, with their family, but also living um, with uh, one person under there. And you see it says Lilla Jackson. And Lilla Jackson is my grandmother, Delala Jackson Landry. So it shows me that uh, my bell had uh, my grandmother as well. And my bell actually took care of kids up until her death until 1971. She helped to raise one of my uncles. 1920, remember we saw that uh, we from oral history, the church history, we knew that my bell was somewhere in Lafouche Parish. So here's the family again. Here goes Reverend John Myers. And then look who's right next door. Alex Jefferson, and then right next door to them is Mary Jordan. Mary Jordan is actually my Mary, Mary Jefferson. So my bell was living next door to her daughter and um, and her mom, Sarah Meyer. And you notice how Meyer up here is spelled M-I-R-E. That's the same family. It also shows, if you scroll across, that they were all working at the sawmill. So that made me start to kind of like want to get a better understanding of what did this look like? What were some of the tools that Grandpa Alex may have worked with? Okay, here's the family again up in East Louisiana. And here's Sarah right here. And then you also see all of the kids listed down. 
And then also see Mama Bell right here with her husband, Alex, on the 1910 census. So I just kept working my way back. Each census will release, uh, kind of like give you information, uh, different information based on the year of the census. And I could cover this. I'll cover this in another class, but just for the sake of time, I'm just working my way backwards. And then this is the family again <clears throat> on the 1900 census. And it's kind of hard to see because it's faded. So I won't try to force you to look at that, but it's pretty much in this area. So the next thing I did was look for my bell in city directory, and then I saw that the family was living there. She was living with her husband um, in 1945 on Chapatuli Street, and you know that's close to the draft card, 1945. It also shows that Mama Bell was working at Mother's Homemade Pies. Now, the women in my family can bake. I did inherit that skill. There are some other skills I did not get. You can't ask me to dance. I can't do it. I think I got that from my dad's side. But all of the women in my family can bake. And my um my uncle actually made a huge uh cake. And he was in a paper for doing so. But all of them can bake. And my brother has picked up the skill. Uh, my cousin has her own um uh company where she sells baked goods and they're so delicious. So I looked up Mother's Homemade Pies in the newspaper after checking my bell out on the directory. And then I saw that, hey, this, this pie place was located on Magazine Street. And I'm like, wait a minute, this is really close to where my bell lives. It also showed me that, hey, this, 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 this bakery or this company was owned by Mr. Ben, and they lived on Magazine Street, and his family came to um, New Orleans in World War I. So one of the things that you have to do when you're doing African-American research or just research in general, try to understand the people that your family worked for. And if you're doing enslaved history, you almost have to research the family that your family worked for in order to track your family members. But one of the things that made me really smile when I saw that Baca Brothers Best Bread and Mother's Homemade Pies and just how amazing it was, their newspaper article after newspaper article about how good the food was. And I knew that my um, grandmother contributed to that. So another thing that we often forget to look at, and, and this happens with even intermediate or advanced level genealogists, we never turn to look at the museums and the plantations around us. You will, guys will be surprised on how much of your family history is displayed in museums across this country. And it's something that I want to encourage you to do. If you have some time on your hands, check out some of these museum free programs. Go to any of the programs that they have if you're able to, because your family history is hanging on the wall. Um, the cool thing about like the uh, the museums is that they also have digital libraries and collections with information on our family history. So in this case, I was able to go to the Louisiana Digital Library through the New Historic New Orleans collection and found this photo of this building um, in 1957. This is actually where Mom Bell worked in 57. And if that, if that building and that address seems familiar to you, you will know that it's currently the, uh, the the hardware store, the Ace Hardware store on Magazine Street. So that's where my bell used to work um, at that bakery, which is only a few blocks from where she lived. Another thing that I want to encourage you to do as you uh, travel throughout your uh, family tree and just start to research people, please, please, please visit the places where your ancestors come from. It's so important to stand on those grounds to get a feel for the people around, talk to the people that you come across, ask questions about your ancestors. They may know the answer, or in some cases, they have photographs of your ancestors. Um, I was able to go to Clinton, Louisiana, and visit this area, uh, which is like in the downtown area. And I don't know, guys, all I can just tell you is that it just feels familiar to me. Um, I can't explain it. I remember Sal Serio from Jefferson Parish Library when he talked about when he visited the place where his family came from and just that feeling that he got and then how emotional he got when he started showing some of the photographs. So you guys, I just, I beg you, if you, have, if you need something to do, go and take a road trip and visit where your family came from. Uh, on one of my trips, I went out to visit the, um, the Cypress Sawmill Museum in Patterson, Louisiana. 
and I saw these big, huge stars, and I was like, oh, my goodness, I hope this isn't the thing that that caused Grandpa Alex his injury. These things were huge, but, you know, that cypress tree business was really huge in Louisiana. Um, this is one of the houses that um, Grandpa Alex and um, Mama Belle lived in on Chapatula Street, and that house is still standing. I'm not sure if it looks the same, um, but they were living in that area from 1928 to 1932. And here's a little snippet of my family tree. It's much larger than it is now. But when I first started doing this tree, this is where I was many years ago. And I just wanted to show you guys, it has grown tremendously since then. But as you can tell, my mom is one of a bazillion sisters and brothers. I have all of those aunts and uncles around town. Many of them are still alive. And they all have kids who have kids who have kids. I have tons of family here. But it's just important to show, like, where my tree was. And then right now, if I showed it to you, this screen couldn't possibly hold it. But just this is just the information I gather from just oral history alone. And all of that information has been since filled in. I know more about the London family. So what happened, how I found out about Mom Bell's dad was through my DNA journey. So I took an ancestry DNA test. And I was able to get an idea. And, of course, my DNA results have changed a lot since then. But the, I wasn't so concerned about ethnicity for my DNA test. I really wanted to find my relatives. I really wanted to connect with people um, that, you know, I was separated from due to slavery and, uh, and just migrations. And so my DNA has opened up a world of information for me. And one of the things that I was able to find was Shad London. And so in researching Shad, I was able to identify my Bell's birth father, who was Tom London, Thomas London. And once I started doing Shad's uh, research, I noticed that he descended from Deborah, who descended from Harold. Harold was Thomas's son. And Thomas was my Bell's brother. And so my DNA just helped me out so much with research and family history. And one of the cool things that I found was just that my family was involved in the Baton Rouge bus boycott during the Civil Rights Movement, and one of my best nephews, Henry London, owned the bus company out there. So these are people I've never met. I haven't met their descendants. I'm still working on connecting with them, with my Uncle Clay, but it's just so amazing how DNA was able to uh, let me uh, learn about these people. I did connect with Shad. It's just so awesome that I was able to connect with these people. Another thing that happened when you do oral history and you go to the courthouse and you pull probate records, sometimes you find things that um, will hurt you in terms of not necessarily, it's kind of in a good or bad way. So, I was able to find a will with um, my Bell's ancestors on there with both her uh, grandmother, Polly, and her great-grandmother, Sally. But it was, I have to admit, it was kind of heartbreaking for me to, um, to see this document and to see dollar signs attached to them. So that's one of the things that, we deal with when we do African-American genealogy or just genealogy as a whole, sometimes we find documents that will kind of break our heart but make us feel good at the same time because I knew that I have one document that lists in my grandma Sally, a.k.a. Sarah. I knew that she had other kids from this document and this conversation and learning about uh, um, Grandma Mama Polly. And I just want to encourage you to explore and share the good, the bad, and the ugly of your genealogy because it's, it's history, right? And if we share it, we won't repeat it. We'll repeat the good stuff and leave the bad stuff behind. So I'm getting close to uh, closing, and I just want to encourage you to go to our website, to subscribe, and once you subscribe, you'll receive this um, Louisiana African American Genealogy Digital Resource Guide, and it has all of the links in there that I've talked about and dozens more. There's also information about how you can further your knowledge with some of the other websites and people that I follow just to learn 
more information, and then there's also a section, um, if you click on it for genealogy with more information. And here's some photos that I just want to share, share, share uh, with you guys. This photo actually came about when I did this very same presentation for LGS Historical Society. I was doing a talk on my bell there, and um, I met this guy, and he told me his mom died talking about Belle Jefferson and Mama Belle. I mean, that's what everybody called her. And so I didn't have this photo, but the guy did. And we were trying to figure out if the lady here was the same as the woman here, but just younger. And I was like, well, I knew my grandma couldn't afford, a, you know, a coat like that. That coat is, go that coat is gorgeous. And so the guy actually paid for, due to the kindness of his art, because I just didn't have the money to do so, but he paid for a forensic genealogy to be done to compare the photographs. And I actually have a video of it. So what I'll do is I'll upload that video to my website on Monday so you guys can take a look at it. But the photos they, they take um, using uh, this cool software, they merge both of the photos together. And we found out that this lady here is, in fact, my grandmother. This is my mom. My mama bell was his mama bell. And just the relationship that we were able to establish that my grandmother, my mama bell, was actually working for his family um, at a private home in New Orleans um, where uh, his family actually owned this home. And it's, for me, it meant a lot to me and to him, and that's why I love doing these presentations. I love connecting with people who um, work for my ancestors or who knew my ancestors and just the information or resources that they can share with me. And I just wanted to share, these are the only pictures that I have of Mama Bell, but these photos mean the world to me. Um, and this is her at just various stages of her life, and this photo is just her. These, these photos are her. This is who she was and what she did. And when I look at her hands and know that those hands were warm, but she sacrificed everything with her hands to make sure that her family was taken care of. And she did this up until the day she died. And I just believe that Grandpa Alex died a couple of months after her because he just missed her so much. And here's my contact information. In closing, I just want to thank you all for having me and spending this Saturday afternoon with me. And I encourage you to reach out to me uh, if you have any questions about genealogy or if you need help with anything. I am on social media, um, semi-active on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. But you can always email me if you have a question about genealogy that you want, don't want to share right now. Or you can even give us a call. I'm a really quick emailer. You can also text that number that you see on the screen. I respond to text and email very quickly. Phones, I'm kind of slow with it. But um, thank you all again for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Gaynell. That was like a wonderful presentation. Um, y'all, I am going to open up chat for, um, for, uh, for question and answer session in just one moment. I apologize. Mm -hmm. For some reason right now, it is forcing all of the chat to direct message me, <laughs> but I want, to, <laughs> I, want, I want you all to have your, um, your stuff to be, uh, your, your questions to be public so I can get through them. Mm -hmm. You can start asking them now and I'll be sure to ask them out loud to Gaynell. Um, in mm -hmm. fact, you know what, y'all just type it. If it's just coming to me, I'm just going to read it out loud. Okay. Shantae Washington says, great job as always, Gaynell. Um, Thank you, Shantae. And Martin Gidry says, excellent presentation. Thanks for sharing your story with us. Thank and you. Here, um, uh, Seymour Samuels is asking about out of New Orleans access. Um, so uh, if you guys would with me, I am going to share my screen real quick. And we're going to uh, go to the library website just to show what you need to do to um, get an out of area card. Now, I will say this now, I only recommend doing this if you live, if you do not live in one of the following four parishes, Jefferson, St. Tammany, 
East Baton Rouge, or Orleans. If you live in one of those four Louisiana parishes, you have access to all the same resources that you would with an Orleans Parish library card. So there's no need for you to get an out of area card. If you are a Jefferson Parish resident, you can get a reciprocal borrowing card with us, but I will say, since we have virtually the same resources, what you'll be getting out of that is more access to um, the general library's digital book offerings and, and stuff like that, but it is still totally possible. But if you're mm -hmm. completely out of those four parishes and you are interested in getting a New Orleans Public Library non-resident card, it costs, um, it costs $50 a year, but it gets you full access to Heritage Quest, which is Ancestry Light, Fold 3, our local newspaper databases for the main papers in the city, which are the Times Picayune slash Daily Picayune, the item, the states, and the states item, all of which eventually merged into our current Times Picayune. But we have those historically dating back to 1838. We have newspapers.com of several smaller local papers. And that's what the $50 a year will get you access to. And then there's a ton of other library related databases that are very helpful. Let me share my screen real quick so we can go through that. And then I wanna get, I see the questions are piling up. So I wanna get to those for you, Gaynell. Um, but let's do this real quick. Let me share my screen. And I think this is important. This is good information. It all ties in. And um, yeah, share. Please share. Oh, my favorite screen. Oh, here we go. <laughs> so on your screen right now should be our home website, nolalibrary.org. Um, so uh, let me, uh, I'm sorry, my, uh, let me zoom in a little bit. Hopefully that's well, no, now we're on the mobile view. Let's not do that here. <laughs> this is the regular view. So if you are an out of area resident, you want to go to nolalibrary.org and you want to click on services and you want to go down to library card information and application. Now there is a big link to apply for a library card. If you do that, you can get a temporary registration number. Oh, Jerome. Oh no, I forgot to let Jerome in. Okay, sorry, sorry about that, sir. You are back in. Um, okay, so uh, apply for a library card. This will get you a temporary uh, PACREG number that will still allow you to access all the databases that I just mentioned. Um, and and it, since it's a temporary card number, it lasts for two months. So if you wanna just do a test drive of the databases, please um, go ahead and just do the direct application. But if you do decide that you're interested in the year long subscription, you want to scroll down here and if you can see in this this little blue you want to um you want to email circulation team at nolalibrary.org to get your application process started and they will help you finish it but in the meantime if you just want to test drive our resources go ahead and click on apply for a library card um just to show you what you get i'm going to show you um, our databases which are located under research and then databases so um, what we have here is, uh, as you can see, we, we, you can get full access to, to full Ancestry, like it includes Ancestry Europe, da 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 da. You can get access to all of that at home um, through March 2021. Ancestry has been graciously continually extending the at home free access through the library card, like on and on throughout the pandemic. They've been wonderful about that. It's great. But even once that closes down, you'll still have access to Heritage Quest Online, which has most of the major ancestry resources, and you can always access that one at home. Um, but the other ones that I recommend, so as you can see here, there's a little library card next to the ones that require a library login. But um, as you scroll down, you can see we have lots of stuff. One of my favorites for local maps is Fire Insurance Maps Online. Um, here's Fold 3, as we talked about. Uh, there's New Orleans newspapers and newspapers.com. New Orleans newspapers is for the big local newspapers historically back to 1838. And newspaper.com is for even smaller ones that go back even slightly earlier in the 1800s. We have, uh, you know, little local materials like the Louisiana Courier and some other ones select dates. Um, so the smaller newspapers in the area are now available through newspapers.com, the historic ones. And then as you can see, there's Sanborn Maps, which is very similar to fire insurance maps online, except it's, I think it's in black and white, although they may have recently revised to color. Um, but so that's, that's kind of a very quick overview of our stuff. 
and how to apply for the out of area card. Let me go back to where you go to the out of area card. Again, that's our website, nolalibrary.org, and you'll go to services. You'll go down to library card information and application. If you wanna do a quick tour, tour um, of our resources for two months, you can apply for a temporary, you can apply for a library card with a temporary registration. And if you decide that you do wanna spring for the full year, email circulation team at nolalibrary.org. Okay, now let's get back to the rest of the questions. I am going to stop my screen sharing. Okay, let's get back to business. Okay, um, that is out of New Orleans access. Uh, Rachel Alamon says, great presentation. What a fascinating family history. Caroline Center says, thank you. That was wonderful. Seymour Samuels, out of access to the NOLA. Okay, we just went over that. Um, Karen Douglas says, thank you for your presentation. Leonard Smith says, great presentation. When will the documentary come out? <laughs> I need help, Leonard. <laughs> I'll bug you. Um, Caroline Center says, my research is about 100 years earlier on enslaved African Americans in rural Louisiana. What is your advice, Danielle? I have that too. Um, my, if I'd have done my dad's side, I believe that side of the tree goes all the way back to 1600. Um, on my paternal side, actually on both sides, all of my ancestors were enslaved. I haven't, um, really found any free people of color uh, other than um, when like, uh, for example, on my career line, um, uh, my, I do have a grandfather, now that I think about it, that was a free person of color and that's how that side of the tree went further back. But everyone else, you guys, everyone else, where all of my people were enslaved and that's why I created this company called Our Mammies, just dedicated to those women and to those people, um, they were all domestics or, um, or either carpenters or engineers on a plantation. Um, with that side of the history, I would like to point out just because it's, I don't like to create things that already exist, especially when those things are amazing. So if you have access to YouTube, I will refer to Black Pro Gen, and that link is inside of my digital resource guide as well. But you guys, they have, I would say, probably hundreds, if not thousands of videos on researching and documenting um, enslaved people and not just Louisiana, but other parishes. Because when you research enslaved people, understand that everybody didn't originate from Louisiana. Um, my husband's side, those guys that were down there in Plaquemine Parish for at least 300 years, same as my point of teeth. Um, ancestors, but the rest of them kind of made their way via Virginia, South Carolina, North Carolina. And the cool thing about Black Pro Gen and all the things that uh, True and Nika are doing over there is they're taking it state by state and pointing out resources. And they're just, uh, all I can tell you is, okay, now I'm going to give you some brutal truth. It's not easy, it's, but there are resources out there. There are documents for Louisiana Parish. If you have a very specific question, you can email it to me and I can point out resources from there. But I do want to encourage you to look at Black Pro Gen and then also joining um, the Louisiana Afro-American Genealogical Society. And I can send you the link to that as well. Um, we are working on a couple of projects that um, will be shared soon. And then they, they will also have their, uh, I'm saying they, but it's we. Uh, we'll also have a set of, uh, of uh, talks coming up as well that's going to uh, address slavery in all other parts of Louisiana. Um, but it's certainly, and Amanda can tell you, just like based on the things that they have in their records, it's a lot of information, y'all. And there will be no way I could speed talk it in eight minutes. Yeah. Um, but I would just encourage you to email me if you have a specific question. And, um, and I can put my... I, Amanda, can you put my email in the chat? Yeah, or, or, <laughs> um, or either go to my website and subscribe because I do share information um, through um, through my website. But again, the, 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 the ladies and the gentlemen at Black Pro Gen, they have really hammered this stuff down. Um, my, I call myself the genealogy hype girl 
Like, I literally want to get you excited about your public libraries, museums, and genealogy in general, and then encouraging you to, to go in and build in those professional developments. There, but there, there are tons of people who can help you. But if you have a specific question, I'm willing to do my best to answer for you. Excellent, excellent. And, and, and again, everybody email Gaynell and she'll get you direct links to those. And um, let's see here. Uh, next, uh, who do we have next? We have Ebony. Oh, wait, okay. Uh, very access. Ah, is this recording going to be available for the participants? Yes, yes, it is. I will have a recording up by the end of this following week, um, and it will uh, be posted at. Let me give you our YouTube link real quick. I'm sorry, it's long. You guys, uh, once you get here, if you subscribe, you'll get a notification for uh, when it becomes available. And um, let's see here. I'm posting it in chat right now. So that's the YouTube channel where this recording will go up so you guys can watch it later. And then Ebony's second question, sorry, I'm scrolling back and up. My family is from North Louisiana, but I live in New Orleans. So this, this will be excellent. This will be excellent to um, put, to, to help share mm -hmm. with them and stuff like that. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. And then- And so I was gonna say, yeah, I'm sorry, Amanda. Oh, go ahead. Right go ahead. I got you. Or should I go to yeah, and I was going to say, Ebony, we um, a part of that uh, Louisiana chapter of the National uh, African American Genealogy and Historical Society. Um, we have members in that group who have ancestors in North Louisiana, and they have tons of information as well. So, like I said, if you email me, I'll certainly share you the link on how to join up, and then so that we can share research. Uh, and it's it's National African American Historical and Genealogy Society. Yeah, I don't have the. I'm, I'm looking. Yeah, it up. it's on my it's in my digital resource guide, but it's the Louisiana chapter. Yeah, of the Afro American Historical and Genealogy Society, and I also have links to uh, Dr. Antoinette Harrell's work, um, another great genealogist in Louisiana, uh, a bunch of others. Like I, I did most of the the work for you guys, like to make it easier for you to get you started. And then once you start, um, you'll have different questions then. And that's gonna take like specialized talk. Um, but please, yeah, yeah, email me, subscribe, anything that I come across that's helpful to new genealogists or just intermediate and gene genealogists, I will share it with you. Great, awesome, that's, yeah, that's fabulous. And um, I will throw some more links in as soon as we finish the question and answer, but let's see here. Our next question is from Gerilyn Isaac. Do small towns in Louisiana have genealogy centers? My family is from Franklinton, Louisiana. Um, it varies from library to library. Like for example, um, I done some research down in uh, Terrebonne Parish Library, one of their uh, main branches. It just varies from parish to parish. I'm not too familiar with all 64 parishes in Louisiana, but all the library. Yeah, all of the libraries have very different resources. Um, I can say that uh, it, it's some of those smaller parishes, they may not, but don't be surprised what's not at Orleans Parish Library or at Jefferson Parish Library. They may have your records there. Um, who knows, right? Um, but I would just encourage you to contact your library and see if they have any genealogy resources um, available to you. And if not, they may be able to point you in the right direction. Let's see here. In fact, I see um, there is a Franklinton Branch Library um, at, on mm -hmm. Free Street. Uh, let's see. Yeah. It looks like they are part of Washington Parish Library. So their website is WashingtonParishLibrary.info. Let me let me plug that into the chat as well. Yeah, and then just whatever resources they have available is going to vary. And I didn't get too much into probate records um, because that's more of the intermediate, but um, the courthouse is definitely a huge resource for you guys. And um, again, Black Her Gen covers uh, researching probate records. Antoinette, Dr. Antoinette Harrell has a lot of information on that as well, but that's definitely, that's a whole course on its own, to be honest with you guys. It's just so much information that you can find uh, dealing with probate records. Yeah, pro probate is is easily a, a whole whole course, um, which mm -hmm. we're working on like local probate, but that 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 mm -hmm. one is taking us some time to complete because it's it's complicated and it takes a lot of research. But um, yeah. if you subscribe to our website, which is let me let me mm -hmm. put that 
link in there. Um, our, our Facebook, that is. Um, yeah. For the city archives, we do, um, whenever we have new stuff, um, new programs, we will always let you know and gain mm -hmm. info them too. But this is our Facebook if you want to um, subscribe to us. Uh, let's see here. Our next qu question is going to be um, from uh, Kate Hymed. She says, I live, and I may take this one actually, I live out of state, so I'm interested in access as well. I hope we covered the access in the little tour we just did, Kate. But she also mm -hmm. says, do you have database for Louisiana Weekly? And I will say that no, no, there is no digital database for Louisiana Weekly. It's still mm -hmm. an operational publishing newspaper currently. Mm -hmm. It is a very small operation, unfortunately, and they've mm -hmm. never actually digitized anything. Uh, what we have access to at the Louisiana, in the city archives is we have it on microfilm from 1925 um, up to a certain point. And uh, if you have citations like or dates they, and, and a date and a subject that you'd like us to um, see if we can find an article for within limits, mm -hmm. we'll do up to um, a certain amount for free, but you can ask us to look at them and get you virtual PDFs of specific pages. So mm -hmm. um, you can do that by emailing your request to archivist at nolalibrary.org and we'll take a look at it and see if it's possible or not given the information. But we really do, I will say for a successful request, you will need a day, like a date to the day that you want us to look at. And if you have a paid and, and a subject like a name or something, it will take us a while because since these are not digitized, they aren't text searchable. We would have to, you know, we're still open to the public um, for limited appointments. We're still working the desk. We're still answering phones. It will take us a while to complete a request if you don't have as much detail as you can. And this is specific for, for Louisiana Weekly. Um, but don't let that put you off. If you have a date and you, um, if you have a date and you have a subject like a name or, um, event or location, please email us the date and the location. And we will try to take a look at the Louisiana weekly for you and get you digital copies of what we find or don't find. Okay. The next question, my fam, well, I guess this is a statement. Um, my family is from what was called a Takapa. Um, do you have any, uh, you know, um, am I saying it wrong? Atacapas? Atacapa, right? Um, I guess, I guess, uh, just, uh, do you have any suggestions on Atacapa resources? I, I guess I would say um, Kekishu Parish is a good resource, right? Yeah, and then I would also, what parish is that again? I th let me double check. Um, well, Atakapa is both a tribe and um, sort of a region, but. Yeah, I was going to say what parishes specifically, because I may be able to point you to a person instead of. Uh... Atakapa, am I crazy? Is it Atakapa Parish? It's Opelousas is um, where I'm sure. Opelousas. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, that would be Alex. Uh, Alex. Creole Alex Genealogy. It's, on my, it's in my digital resource guide. But the family, you're probably researching, you've probably already done it. Um, Alex is amazing in terms of uh, genealogy in Southwest Louisiana. Um, yep, St. Martin, St. Mary, those are all of his parishes of Southwest Louisiana, more of. If you're on Facebook, look up uh, Alex Genealogy. His website, I'm sorry, his link to his page is in my digital resource guide, but he's one of the best. Southwest Louisiana. I haven't met anyone better. Um, between him and uh, and uh, Dr. Christoph Landry, they're the best for those two parishes. Um, but definitely, I definitely recommend Alex because he not only has the research, but he also has the photographs. And I can't give you anything better than that. Uh, his information, if you look up Creole Alex Genealogy on Facebook, the link is on my digital resource guide, but he's on Facebook. Guys, it's a gold mine. He, his, his stuff is top notch. He, he, he goes to the courthouse regularly. Um, and like I said, yep, that's him. Uh, that Creole Alex. Uh, 
genealogy. Look him up on Facebook. He's been a lot for Southwest Louisiana. And if he hasn't done it, he'll probably be excited to help you. So definitely reach out to Alex. Um, I have a great, I have a great prop from Jerry Bell that didn't go to the, um, to the entire thing, but it is for families who lived in urban areas. If you have addresses of homes or workplaces, the Sanborn fire insurance maps also are yeah. fire insurance maps online, and many of them are also mm -hmm. digitized on the Library of Congress website. Can show details of how homes and buildings were constructed, like were they wood, were they brick, were they metal. Mm -hmm. Um, and how many floors, it'll usually say two, three, one, two, building materials mm -hmm. and outbuildings. Um, Jerry has had good luck looking at urban areas in awesome. Mississippi, Jackson and Okalona between 1870 to 1920. And um, our fire insurance maps and Sanborn maps um, through our library databases, those are gonna focus on Louisiana, the state, but mm -hmm. as, as Jerry has said, um, these Mississippi maps are available on the Library of Congress website. So that's loc.gov. And once you get there, if you look up Sanborn maps, they have a whole sort of section and guide. And that's an excellent resource. Uh, yeah, and thank you for sharing that because even though your ancestors may live in Louisiana now, they may not have originated from that area. So thanks for sharing that. We appreciate it. And that's the greatness of being together in groups like this. Okay, our next question, let's see here, is. Um, any resources for Jewish genealogy for New Orleans Jewish families? And I recommend the Jewish Genealogical Society of New Orleans. Let me uh, drop that mm -hmm. link in the, in the chat. It's, it's jewishgen.org. And, um, and there are some uh, contact, there's more contact information mm -hmm. on the website. I'm gonna plug it here. There we go. And let's see here. Um, oh. Jerry says, great presentation. Thank you. Um, and and so we have a bunch of wonderful, other wonderful, great presentations. I'm sorry, y'all, about the chat. For some reason, some of it would go to everyone. And some of it was like a direct <laughs> message to me. So I'm trying to like, you know, read all the questions that I got direct to me and, and try to, you know, share the comments that I got direct to me. Shelly and Kate both said great presentation and wonderful information. And then, um, Yes, Shelly Murphy says, yes, Black Per Gen, thanks for the mention. Yes, excellent. And then Leonard says, great looking website. And uh, there, and then we have, a, a, sorry for my terrible typo of our mammies that I fixed. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I put all the M's in one place. But um, so there's a link to our YouTube channel and let's see here. Um, oh yeah, and Shelly thankfully shared the Black Per Gen uh, link right there in chat. Thank you, um, and then Garcia says small communities may have a museum that would help have resources to help mm -hmm. people with history. And you have expounded upon that for sure, Danielle. I know. I know about yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I couldn't put that piece in there. Uh, that's more of like the longer presentations that I usually do in the library, but yes, yeah, the, the small museums, I worked closely with one in Donaldsonville for a number of years, and that's where the first place I saw a book, there's a book uh, from a midwife who recorded all the births. That was the first place I saw something like that. So yeah, definitely check, check, explore your town, y'all. Go and visit where your family came from. Explore the library, courthouses, church houses, everything you can think of. Just go get out, get out the house and do that. Put your mask on though. <laughs> yes, <laughs> always. Um, let's see here. And we just have a couple more. Um, let's see here. Linda asks, do you know if there are any records for the old Blandon funeral home, which buried many African Americans in New Orleans? And the funeral homes can be tough. I will just preface this with mm -hmm. because they were private businesses. And unless they had an active connection to um, like they really sought out a museum or an archives or mm -hmm. the right people, their records tended to end up wherever they ended up, especially when the, when the, sometimes when, when the business closed, they just left the records in the attic of the business and whoever ended up mm -hmm. buying the building next just didn't mm -hmm. dispose of them because it wasn't, you know, they, they bought a building, you know, not, not a history. And uh, it can be tough. Blandon does not sound familiar, but um, if if I believe like the historic New Orleans collection has like maybe two 
um, uh, Creole and persons of colors, uh, or no, they just, they just have some general, they have like Jacob Schoen records or something. It's very limited. I do not, I am not familiar with anybody holding the Blandin records, unfortunately. Yeah, and I do remember uh, reading um, in one of my emails something about a group who uh, is working to digitize some records from the funeral home. So email me and um, I will put you in contact with that group to see if there were any efforts about any um, funeral homes in New Orleans but, or if that's in the plan. But I do know that they're working to digitize some of those records. Oh wow! Okay, okay, that's excellent. That's good to know. Um, so that's um, that is uh, that's you know currently what we know right now. I do know um, if you guys mm -hmm. uh, know about CreoleGen.org, which is kind of a great mm -hmm. uh, sort of a website where a lot of our local researchers post post their research. I know at least um, one person has posted uh, two snippets from the Bland and LeBlanc funeral parlor. And again, let me type that in. That is, and I'll, I'll link the, I'll go ahead and just link the article directly, but um, just know that Creole Gen is the site that you want to bookmark. But here's the article directly about Bland and um, let's see here. Okay. And what is next? Who we got next? We just got a few more. We're probably going to wrap up at about 1230 y'all just so you know, but I will try to get to everything I can. Um, Attack of Paul became St. Mary and St. Martin. And then I guess also partially St. Landry. Okay. So St. Mary and St. Martin. Um, yeah. Again, like you said, you want to um, take a look at the uh, specific like um, genealogy uh, groups as well. Um, let's see, Creole Alley genealogy. Yeah. So um, a few of my family lines are from Clinton and moved to New Orleans. Any research, any recommendations for research in Clinton? Let's see here. Um, please email me because we're probably related. <laughs> okay, well, there we go. This is the Gaynell is your, is your uh, source for research on the area. Yes, yes. Please email me seriously. Um, because I know both my Jefferson and um, one other line moved from Clinton to New Orleans, and I'm sure we're cousins. I, I, I wouldn't doubt it. Email me. Okay, and then um, our next question, may I get a family out of state membership so my daughters can research from the archives? Yes, absolutely. Uh, once, once you um, sign up for that card and pay for the membership, and you're out of state, I, I have no problem with you sharing your login information with your family. Mm -hmm. I think that's great. I think that's awesome. <laughs> um, let's see here. Um, uh, do you know if there are, oh, wait, wait, how did I miss these? I'm sorry. Do you know if there are any records for the old Blandon? Or maybe I'm, I'm seeing, oh, okay. It, 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 first it went to me and then it went to everybody. I apologize, guy guys um Dini says thank you for a great presentation and she's a chicago member of aagehsc so that be here and then blandon blandon funeral home wasn't for may yes um mm -hmm. yes uh and uh also you know um uh my coworker gregory osborne um you know if you want to email the archives uh, we can probably make sure that you know um creole genealogy if you want to check in with greg osborne but go to gay now first because she is the local expert and then you know greg osborne is also a local creole. Greg is amazing <laughs> greg is amazing <laughs> and greg works at the city archives with me he's he's great um i i will just say um email archivist at nola library.org <laughs> question but if it's a greg question greg will get it <laughs> that's how we'll direct it no question let me just type that in there one more time um and then uh let's see here and then uh yes kate did find river information at the river road african-american museum in donaldsonville when she so yes search search the local local um mm -hmm. recommendations and then that brings us to the end um end of our questions end of our presentation um christina says thanks very great presentation thank you Gaynell, yes it was an excellent presentation it's you when you when you speak on this you address so many of the like gray areas and like confusing spots that people will run into in in their genealogical search particularly like 
what you'll have to deal with if you have enslaved ancestors. And it's critical that like we get that information out to as many people as possible because that's that's what equity is, is making sure everybody ends up with the same tools to get the same thing. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. and grateful to you for like present, you know, allowing us to present your presentation. You let it, <laughs> allowing, you know what I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> but yes, I'm so grateful. Um, to everybody who's still here, again, um, we're going to have, um, we want to check uh, let me kind of type in here um, the short list of where you want to go for everything that you need for the recording and for um, additional information and uh, Gaynell's website. So that's for the YouTube channel. And then Gaynell's website is going to be, let me copy that over. So it's a direct link you can click on. Okay, command. Here's Gaynell's direct link to her website. And then let's see here, let's go back to our page for just, this is just kind of a general landing page that has links to everything is including a direct link, which is also on Gaynell's website uh, for this specific presentation. And um, let's see here, which I've already lost. I apologize, y'all. I'm not good at managing my tabs on my browser. <laughs> And um, this also, um, this one that I'm putting in now is kind of our general programs page, but so far since the beginning of the pandemic, we've done, we did a, a six week series with the Archdiocese and now we've done this wonderful program with Gaynell and there's links to all the resources from both of those here, um, YouTube videos, all the other resources, attendant websites, I highly recommend you check them out. And as always, if you have questions, you can email archivists at nolalibrary.org. And also let me put a link to our general genealogy guide, which um, is a way for you to, to tell what the city archives holds and if it may be of use or meet the year range that you're looking for. And that is our genealogy guide. And I am linking that now. Ah, and with that, um, I will say we should all go enjoy the rest of our Saturdays. And once again, thank you Gaynell for everything. Oh. I just wanted to share one thing I just remembered. If you are on Facebook at all, find me on, on Facebook on Monday. One, I didn't get to the best um, ancestry DNA test. I'm going to be giving one of those away on Monday. And I'm going to be doing a big reveal. So check me out on Facebook. I forgot to mention that. My brain is somewhere else, probably on lunch, but definitely Monday, 10 a.m. There we go. And there's a link to her, her Facebook page. Very last link. And now we should all go eat, I think. Because I'm hungry. Yes, I'm hungry. Bye, y'all. Bye.